Good morning. I'm Jace Kazire with Denison Yachting. Today I have the opportunity to show you around one of my latest listings, a 65 Monte Carlo yacht built in 2016. Since the year this model was introduced, the 65 has really grown into her own. She's become a yacht of choice for owners looking for both elegant style and versatile deck spaces. We've said it before on our channel, but it bears repeating that the 65 has earned herself a reputation as a mini mega yacht. That's because she shares many of the aesthetics and characteristics of today's super yachts. One of the main things I like about this yacht are her ride and stability. This Monte Carlo is equipped with a Seakeeper gyro stabilizer that doubles down on her impressive performance. Another thing that enhances her ride is the carbon fiber hardtop on the flybridge, aiding in weight reduction. As far as the layout is concerned, the most noteworthy aspect below decks is the full beam master. The owner's suite and accompanying guest accommodations work in harmony with the rest of the interior that's flooded with light and accented with warm finishes. This brings me to what really steals the show, the 65 Monte Carlo Profile. From the top down, this yacht was designed to impress and carries herself more like a classic car than a dated sport yacht. From the versatility of the flybridge to the bow flare that sweeps aft. This yacht really comes to life when you see her underway. Let's get started today at the stern where you have the primary space where you'll be in constant contact with the water. This hydraulic teak platform is gorgeous and oversized and is the perfect place to set up some chairs or to lay out your water toys. There are two other well-designed features back here. We see the first to the starboard side, where built into the teak stairs is a pass rail that makes getting on and off the boat easier. Directly below this is your shore power hookup. Turning our attention centerline, we see the watertight transom door that leads down into the mechanical spaces and crew cabin. At the foot of these stairs, we first see the ship's washer and dryer and where the shore power cable is stored when reeled in. Also tucked away in this area is the water maker. Facing the port side, we get a look at the crew cabin that features a pair of berths with a sink and a wet head. Continuing forward brings us to the engine room. In here we arrive at a pair of MAN V8 engines that generate around 2400 horsepower between the two. Aft of the engines is a 23 kW Kohler generator, and just below that, the Seakeeper stabilizer. When she's underway, these MAN engines offer a cruise speed of around 25 knots and pushes her at a top speed of 29. When you take into consideration her top speed and the fact that she's got a stable ride, you can see why this yacht has become a mainstay in the warm waters of the southeastern United States. It's an ideal platform for making runs back and forth from Florida to the Bahamas. Our next stop from here is going up to the aft deck, which can be accessed from port or starboard thanks to her Euro-style transom. The most outstanding aspect of this space is its classy look and feel and how it combines for a remarkably large entertaining area. Looking centerline, we see an alfresco dinette. Here, eight guests can be accommodated around a teak table. Outboard of the dinette is the deck gear to port and starboard. Underfoot, throughout the exterior of the main deck, is a well-maintained teak sole. Looking forward and to port, we see stairs that give us access to the flybridge. A huge selling feature of this yacht is the flybridge, and more specifically, the upper helm. This design makes it easy for you to see yourself running this boat as it's intuitive and offers you a great line of sight in all directions. Here we see an array of Raymarine electronics, including a pair of multifunction displays, engine monitors, and the Zenta joystick. To the starboard side of the wheel are the throttles for her man engines. Opposite the upper helm to port is an L-shaped bench seat, which is the perfect spot for joining the captain on your way back to the dock. Aft of the upper helm is a U-shaped alfresco dinette with a teak table. 
After the dinette is a grilling station that easily disappears when you aren't using it. This area also has a sink and an ice maker below. Additionally, there's a fridge right around the corner. Covering the flybridge is a carbon fiber hardtop I mentioned earlier. The way the hardtop is constructed not only lowers the yacht's center line of gravity, but also adds to the yacht's sleek look. In the middle of the hardtop is an electrical sunroof. From the flybridge helm, the captain has a great line of sight to the bow, which is one of the most beloved features of the 65 Monte Carlo. This is our next stop. There are side decks, both port and starboard, that lead to the aft deck and to the bow. Also note that the teak sole carries forward, as well as teak cap rails. This brings us to one of my favorite areas on board any boat in this class. First we have the sun pads that flank the foredeck. The backs of these raise up, offering a second configuration, and provide versatility to the space. Outboard of each sun pad, is a stainless grab rail that runs up towards the ground tackle. A design feature normally only seen on bigger yachts is the centerline companionway that passes between the sun pads as you make your way to the windlass setup. In addition to the windlass and anchor, you also have huge storage lockers for lines and fenders. Now let's take a look at the yacht's interior, starting in the salon. A big contributor to the success of the 65 series is the layout of the interior, and we see that first with the galley. Its central location makes for easier service between the interior and exterior. Throughout the galley are stone countertops. There's also a full range of Mealy appliances, including a glass cooktop and stainless sink basin. There's also a microwave convection oven, a refrigerator, dishwasher, and a freezer. An important upgrade on this 65 Monte Carlo is the Ghost security system integrated throughout the vessel. This system's primary control panel is found right by the salon entrance to port. Looking to the starboard side, we can see the yacht's formal dining space. Here, a minimal leather top table folds out to reveal a larger hardwood table. On the forward end of the dinette is a TV that raises and lowers. When up, the TV can swivel, allowing it to be seen from almost anywhere in the salon. Forward of this are a set of buttons that control the salon's electric blinds. These blinds are a nice touch and make the area usable at any point of the day. This brings us to a storage cabinet. Aft in the cabinet, you find the salon's AV equipment, including the controls for the yacht's KVH satellite TV controller. Behind the forward cabinet door is storage for dinnerware and flatware. To port is a comfortable U-shaped settee surrounded by windows. Above the sofa, you can see part of the salon's Bose sound system. Opposite the settee is the lower helm station. Running the boat from down here is easy, and this is often the preferred helm station, depending on weather. The lower helm is fully loaded with a top-notch navigation package, and has the same tools as we saw in the upper helm. Let's break down what we see here. There are a pair of Bonning multifunction touchscreens, and integrated is a ship control center for monitoring tank levels and alarms. Looking below the monitor on the port side reveals a Seakeeper display, a control for your main displays, and the Zenta joystick. On the starboard side of the wheel are the engine throttles. And a primary aspect of this, making it great for an owner-operator, is the side deck access door. Now we're going to head downstairs to take a look at the VIP stateroom. First, we see an island berth with storage running along both sides. On the aft bulkhead is a Samsung TV. Aft of the port side is the ensuite with a separate shower stall. Just a few steps outside to starboard is another guest stateroom, this one with twin berths. It also has an ensuite with a separate entrance from the lower companionway. 
Our last stop is the master stateroom, located midship. Taking full advantage of the yacht's 17 feet 1 inch beam, this large stateroom has a surprising amount of usable space and 6.5 feet of headroom. On the starboard side is a wonderful lounging area bathed in light through her hull side windows. Facing forward, we can see the TV, and just around the corner in the entryway is a vanity. There's additional storage on the port side between a large wardrobe and cabinetry. Finally, forward is the ensuite, which is one of the biggest in this class. It features his and hers sinks and a large shower. Thank you so much for joining me on today's walkthrough. I hope you enjoyed this 65 Monte Carlo. If you have any questions or would like to get on board, please reach out to me anytime.